Welcome to Thoughts Roundup. So glad you're with me today. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in, listening. Keep the cards and letters coming. <laughs> so that's what they used to say on the radio. I guarantee you. Well, uh, we have Brother Townley with us, and uh, we're just I'm just so uh, glad that he's able to be on the program. I was at his church today. Welcome, Brother Townley. Thank you, Brother Marlon. It's so good to see you. That's good to see you. We've been trying to get together for a while, haven't we? That's right. But we made it happen. We made it happen. That's right. Guess who just called me a while ago? Come on. Jason Calhoun. Wow. What do you think about it? Man, you that's mighty he, nice of him. <laughs> you think he's on up and up? Okay. Yeah, then. yeah. <laughs> you ask me a hard question. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, you can tell we're friends. All of us are friends. But anyway, I enjoyed so much being at your church tonight. Didn't we have a service? My Lord, we had powerful church. Now, folks, we're not just saying that. It was powerful church. Yes, it was. I believe people got healed tonight. Amen. That's now, right. I know they worship. I guarantee you. They got me doing all kind of fancy footwork there. <laughs> Wonder I had to fell off. You anyway. did it. You did it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, how long have you been at the church? I have been uh, in Jennings for 23 years. 23 years? Yeah. November will be 24, so almost 24 years. Well, I'll tell you what, it's been a long time, and I thought a time or two I've seen this, but late, but tonight, you need a church, new church building more than anybody I've seen in a long time. You don't have any seats. <laughs> it's full, packed house. Yeah. That's right. And you're advertising that big service you're going to have. Yeah, that's and right. And y'all just keep saying, well, we don't know where we put them, but we put them somewhere. Are you sure? <laughs> if everybody comes and says they're coming, we will not have enough room. <laughs> we'll have a good I problem. I think you're safe yeah, that's on that. <laughs> <laughs> that never happens. That never happens, that's right. Now, well, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, tonight... You said that you was going fishing tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Tell us about all this fishing. Yeah, well, uh, this this is the fall, and in the fall, I go red fishing in Cameron, Louisiana. Cameron. Yeah, I've got one hot spot in particular. Oh, is that right? That most every time I go, I'm going to catch fish. Well, do you want to tell everybody where it's at? Yeah, Cameron, Louisiana. No, but Easy I'm to find. <laughs> you didn't tell the hot spot. You know, I was in Alexandria, Louisiana when I was very, very young. I imagine 23 or 4. And uh, I turned on the radio and it says, Cameron, Louisiana just blew away. Mm. Was yeah. blown away. You can't, can you remember that? No. But I, I got an idea where you're going with it—a hurricane. Yeah, it was a hurricane. It was yeah. yeah that's what hurricane and yeah. And uh, I remembered that. Have they built Cameron back pretty good? Yes, it's it's really uh, after the hurricanes when the government gives the the funds, they normally bring those buildings back nicer and better. You know, for yeah. I don't them. know how it all was way back then. You know, I know they've got more funds for it probably now. Yeah, that's right. I think people was kind of on their own, maybe. Yeah. You know, then and stuff. Uh, well, what's your what's your plans? You, you We talked about church full. What are you going to do? Well, I'm hoping to build as soon as I can. Uh, we own 15 acres of land right on Interstate 10. Oh, on 10. Right on 10. Oh, well, that's where you need to be. That's right. Yeah. Uh, we're just, we're thrilled for the property. It's prime. Yeah. And uh, we've got the soil samples already done. We've already got our our plans. Oh. Yeah. You're waiting on money. I'm waiting on money. 
That's right. Folks, get the cards and letters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> keep on coming. <laughs> Just, El Rio. If you need my address, though, don't send them. <laughs> no, don't, don't send it to me because I might not pass it on. <laughs> no. Well, that uh, it's going to happen. I believe that. Yeah. You know, I noticed how excited everyone was tonight when when a need is there. Yeah. And people are excited and living for God. It's going to happen. It's gonna I believe happen. that. Yeah. I believe that. And well, I, now, what other kind of fishing do you do? I do uh, in the springtime. I do bass fishing. Do you? Yeah. Where do you do that? I do that at Sam Rayburn Lake, mostly. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, that's up close to Jasper, Texas. Uh, I was in Louisiana when they built that, when they voted wow. you know, to, to build that. My goodness. Yeah, I can remember them cutting the pine, big old tall pines. Wow. Out to make that, it's, it's uh, no, wait. Maybe is that where's Toledo Bend? Uh, Toledo Bend is right on the Texas Louisiana state line. That's where I'm talking about. Okay, all right. Well, they're close to one another. Are they're they? just a, yeah, a few miles apart from one another. And so that's where you go to. That's fish. where I go. I I've always enjoyed fishing Sam Rayburn over Toledo Bend. Uh, there was a day that Toledo Bend was really hot, and it's still good. I don't want to stir nothing up here. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> but but Sam Rayburn for me is just. It's just yeah. a beautiful lake. I love fishing there. You know, I walked out somewhere the other day and there was an elderly gentleman there. And I said, good morning, how you doing? He said, uh, well, it's a fall day. He said, it's about time to go squirrel hunting. Oh yeah, that's right. And you know, I didn't know people still squirrel hunting. That's exactly right. Boy, that people, in, whenever I was coming up, they squirrel and they like to go deer hunting now, you know. Yeah. Did you know in Louisiana, in Seeper Swamp, where I was raised at the edge of Seeper Swamp, they have, there was no deer. My brother saw a deer in the swamp and nobody believed him. Wow. That's how, there was no deer. And I, I if I remember correctly, they brought a deer in from Wisconsin. Wow. And populated that. And then uh, the last few years, yeah. do they still let them hunt with dogs? Yeah. Uh huh. That's right. Some people love still to do that. I got a preacher friend yeah. that still does that. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, I talked to him last year and he did it. They do them like rabbits, they yeah. run them out by them. That's right. Boom. <laughs> And bless them. <laughs> bless them good. <laughs> really good. <laughs> uh, you know, you made mention of, of squirrel hunting. I had a great grandmother that squirrel hunted in, until she was in her 90s. Good grief. Absolutely. She, did she smoke a corn cob pipe? <laughs> no, she didn't, but uh, they were known for chewing tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's something that's right. else. Yeah. She yeah. squirrel hunted. She squirrel hunted with a twenty two rifle for Did you. you know that well, the whole time I was growing up, see, we wasn't South Louisiana. Uh huh. We wasn't in the French country, and of course they call it Cajun country now. Yeah. Uh, we were, we was up in the hills, like uh, beginning of the hills to towards Alexander Shreveport, like that. Yeah. And did you know that the uh, we only gumbo that they made was out of squirrel. No, that's new. And I was totally shocked. Later on in life, when I was off somewhere, <laughs> and they said we're going to make gumbo. I said, well, "Where you get squirrels?" Uh, they said squirrel. <laughs> no, <laughs> they, they, it's shrimp. Yeah, that's right. They were making it out of shrimp. And I never have been a shrimp person, but I see. You know, but boy, you had. Fact is, I had some gumbo there tonight with y'all. Yes, and sir. That's pretty neat. For for all of my preachers, preacher friends that might hear this, we went to Bourbon Street Cafe tonight. Yeah, I thought we was going to New Orleans. <laughs> That's right. Bourbon Street Cafe. 
cafeteria. That's cafe. right. Cafe. Cafe. I have preacher friends that for years when they would come into town, before I could even take them, they'd come into town late. They'd go over there and eat their own po' boys and alligator before I could ever get them there. They tell me that you really enjoy books. Oh, yeah. I love books. I like to talk about them. I like to look at them. Mm. Man told me, like I was telling you, man told me he just he had cows because he just liked to look at them. I said, well, that's the way I am about my books. Oh. I just like to look at them. That's right. I, you, I love that. You don't learn a lot just looking at them, but... No, you have to open the pages, but I sure enjoy you it. You feel good about <laughs> it. You feel good about it. Yeah. So you... Uh, who was pastor here before you? Before me, uh, Titus Alexander. Yes. T.C. Alexander. I see. And, and was he here a good while? He was here for 34 and a half years. And uh, he had a strong ministry. And I, I attribute a lot of the strength and the stability of our church right now to his his, individual ministry. What he yeah. did, uh, yeah. Through the years, there there was ministers that would come and go. You know, nobody stayed very long. Yeah. Uh, but he came in 1969 and just stayed. You know, you preach all over the country. Yeah. I hear of you everywhere. And are we going to have Brother Townley? Who's going to be at the meeting? Well, Brother Townley is going to be there. I think that's awfully nice for you to do that. That's People get to hear you and well I think it's just awfully nice for them to let me come <laughs> now you've yeah. got a brother that's off up in Maine wow yeah he likes to pull my leg you know, mm -hmm. you know he's uh, is he did he adapt pretty good up there he really did I, I was just I, I was surprised, you know, because such a different the climate up there. It's so cold. Oh, it's so cold up there. Yeah. I spent some time, a little yeah. time up in there. Yeah. It's so cold. Well. But he's doing a good job. I mean, he's growing a church. He he has a uh, he has such a gift and a uh, that he's developed a skill of reaching souls and and teaching Bible studies. He does fabulous. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's good. He's that good. is so super. Yeah, you know, a church that's built on Bible teaching and mm. uh, expository, that's good type teaching. Mm -hmm. It, uh, you know, you, you pre preach a subject. It's a little bit hit or miss, but if you take the word and go down the scripture one by one, it feeds everyone. That's good. That's well said. Yeah, it feeds everyone. Everybody gets out of it what they needed for it. That's good. But you know, I've always more been more just preach, take a subject and yeah. preach. Of course, I don't always stay with the subject. <laughs> take a text and wonder every once yeah, in a while. Yeah, drift off. <laughs> But always that drifting is not uh, unintentional either. <laughs> well, let's don't give away no secrets. <laughs> yeah, That's you've got right. some young men, mm. ladies in your church. It's just so super, so super. You well, know, I have been blessed. we got some great young preachers developing. you got anything you want to say on the little sketch that we're making here would you like it? you got anything i i should have asked you before of course you know i don't let my left hand know what my right hand is doing that's right well i think one of the uh, best things that i could say right now is uh, especially to a younger generation is that we would cherish our elder ministers such as yourself and that you men have such wisdom and so much to contribute to the work of God. Uh, you, you guys can say so much in just a short amount of time that 
is so beneficial. Just like, I'm not just trying to butter you up, just like tonight. You stepped in that service, mm -hmm. and, and your age, your experience, mm -hmm. your Thank skill you. anointed, I, the people just connected with you, well, and they received it. Some of our younger preachers, uh, I don't blame them for it because they're young, and mm -hmm. they don't see uh, the need, I don't think. But then there's a certain amount of them that, even though they're young, they do uh, want to kind of know what was ahead of them. Yes. You know, and so that's that's very nice. I, I got a, You don't know this, but I got a, a message that you're in the introduction of it. And I one year uh, we were at Summit Conference in Pigeon Forge, and it was during the time... One or two years, you would tell stories. Yeah. And you got up and said one night, you said, you know, when you drive into these hills, it's almost like these hills and these Appalachian Mountains have a way of screaming, we have a story to tell. Yeah, that's right. We have a story to tell. That's right. And when you said that, I was sitting out in the crowd. Yeah. Something just struck my heart. Yeah. And I thought, you know, may that ever be with my church. Yeah. That when anybody steps into my assembly, they can feel a fresh touch of God, yeah. but yet they they sense, hey, this is a deep well. Yeah, there's been a lot of blood given you for go. this. Yeah, this is not just a new fly-by-night church, but yeah, there's some history here. There's some some of the people that paid for the land and put up the buildings are are, are dead and gone. Yeah. Uh, I've known people in my day that would mortgage their house to help the church. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> you know, and but people come in and sometimes they take the church as a whole different route, right. a non-spiritual route, a non-Holy Ghost route, Yeah. and think nothing about it. My Lord. I think about us, us you made me think of Sister Seaman that was a part of this church. Uh -huh. She was the oldest standing member. She came into this church in the 50s. And she passed away at 95 years old, just a few years ago. And um, there was a time in the history of this church that the pastor gone. She left. She said the pastor just left in the middle of the night. All of the saints left. Only her and her husband would come to church at church time. They would sing a song out of the songbook. They would pay to keep the lights on. And here we got a church today. Look at that. That's what you're talking about. It, it all pivoted on two people. Two people. Faithful saints. You know, I'm so glad you're on the program tonight. This is, Thank you. This, is, this is so nice to have you talking about that sort of thing. And maybe we just kind of wandered into it, but I, mm. it, it's good to, to, to know. Thank God for good people, good, honest people, and people willing to to give themselves for it. Amen. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you for well, thank being you. on the program. And uh, maybe we'll do this again. That'd be okay. awesome. Let's do that. I love you. Y'all look for it. We're going to do it again if, if I live. We hope you do. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you.